it's tough. You're on the road, man, and it's very difficult to stay sane. And sobriety, which I have 11 years of sobriety, you really understand why people on the road that do comedy on the road just stay on the road drinking forever because there's not much else to do. A lot of these guys go on the road, they fuck some strangers, and they stay there for 20, 25 years. They don't build any type of fan base outside of that. They don't put any content out, and they just die in like, uh, you know, I don't know, the lobby of a La Quinta or something. It's a real bad life. Comedy is really a horrible life for most people that do it, which is why, you know, people just die. They drop dead. The greatest comedians ever, Greg Giraldo and Patrice O'Neill, these people die. It's because they, they can't look at highways anymore. They can't, I mean, it's just hard to check into another fucking whatever Marriott courtyard on the side of a fucking highway. And I'm grateful that the fans are coming out. The shows are so much fun. And we have so much fun at the shows. But the idea that it, you're just living out of a suitcase in, in these situations is like, I can't do it a lot. I, I'm not gonna do it a lot. I wanna be back in my studio. I wanna be back, you know, we're gonna do these mini tours like a four times a year or something, but like we're, we're, we're not, this is not going to be on the road 35, 40 weeks a year. I, I can't do it. I don't, I, I can't physically do it. I mean, this last year of the pandemic has allowed me to like make and create so much cool shit that's seen such a wide audience to just, I mean, I just can't, I can't do it. I can't be out here. And it's hard to eat healthy. I mean, what you go to these clubs and the salads are like less healthy than anything else because it's, they're like doused in ranch dressing. They have like deep fried bacon, you know, on t it's like, there's nothing you could do. And there's no gay men. Gay men aren't really huge fans of my comedy, which is fine. But they also like for gay guys, there's no benefit. Straight guys is more of a benefit because straight women come to comedy shows. Gay guy, gay men don't go to comedy clubs. I would never go to a comedy. If I wasn't a comedian, I would never go to a comedy club. They're just disgusting. And I mean, not, the ones I perform at, but the other ones are bad. I mean, it's just gay guy wouldn't do it. Like you wouldn't go out and eat that type of food in that type of environment. Like if you had ever said to me before I was a comedian, like, hey man, you want to go to Chuckles or something? I'd be like, no, I don't. No, 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 I don't. I, I just, you know, there's, there's, it's an environment that it's built for what we do, which is make people laugh. But it's like, it's not, most comedy clubs are not places you want to spend lots of time in. About an hour and a half and you go, get me out. Truly. And then there's some amazing ones that are great. And, you know, I'm not trying to be ungrateful here. And I'm so happy that they exist. But I'm also just being honest as a human on earth, saying that, like, they're, they're disgusting. Most of them. Do you know what I mean? Do you see what I'm saying? They're gross. They're yeah. absolutely filthy and disgusting. And some of the people that work there are some of the most depressing people you'll ever meet. I mean, they come in and every, every, their lives are just a succession of horrors. You're in the green room and these people come in and start telling me they're divorced and the dog's sick and every, you know, and everybody's dead and dying. And re remember this guy. And then I'm, uh, I'm somewhere in the, the South and the guy's coming in and he's telling me how many country music stars coming to the place. And he's like, he's like, you know, Dirks Bentley. I'm like, no, I don't. Can you leave? I'm trying to get my head together here so I can go out and entertain people. But I get it. Keep. And by the way, support these places, please. I'm not saying not to support them be, because they are real businesses. They're not, you know, it's not a non-fungible token. It's an actual place. You're seeing actual live stand up. One of the last bastions of free speech. But let's also be a little honest about what a lot of these places are. A lot of them are in malls. And a lot of them are just not really great. Some of them are, but some of them are not. And I hope they survive and I want them to survive, but maybe they'll evolve Maybe they'll evolve and the food will get better and they'll look a little cooler. I don't know what the next iteration of these things are, but like, you know, I mean, the real bad ones are like, like bonkers in like a hotel, literally like a hotel conference room where you get up and like they've, the people that like would have gone to the live Gator Park that day have been persuaded to go see you do comedy in the, uh, in the uh, conference room of a uh, uh, like uh, Howard Johnson's hotel, and they they're called bonkers.
Can, can you imagine, and they're in Florida, and support them, mm -hmm. but can you imagine? <laughs> One room's at like a Bass Pro Shops or something, right? Why not? Why not? And then you go in and <laughs> you earn like, I mean, I'm earning good money because people are buying tickets, but you go into like bon bonkers and you're on a makeshift stage in a, in a conference room in like Florida and you're saying to yourself, it just feels old. A lot of the way these places are configured, there's they have not evolved since the 80s. Like the comedy club has not made a massive transition. Mm. And it shouldn't be that. Here's the thing. It shouldn't evolve that much. Like it should. I like the older ones where it's darker, smaller, low ceilings. But like some of the newer ones or the ones that were built in the 80s and 90s, they, they look like, like a high-end bowling alley. Like, imagine that. It's like a high-end bowling alley, you know? And it, it just... So I think the next run after we do some of these clubs, which I love, we might get into music venues. We might try to find cool, weird places. I did a theater in Toronto once. It was great. It was, like, cold. People, like, vaping in the theater. Everyone had their jacket on. It, it felt like a homeless shelter. But, it, like, it was a lot of fun. Um, but the comedy club has not evolved much in the in the time that, and I get it. The last year has been very hard for these clubs and you should go out to support them, but just notice that I'm a little right when you do go look around and go, yeah, this is, it's dated, but everything's dated. I guess you go around the country. Most things are dated there. There are still malls, you know, people still go out to the mall and eat the pretzel and walk around and try on clothes in a fitting room. And you go, no, you don't do that. You buy the clothes on the internet. You don't go to the mall anymore. You don't have to go to the mall. I understand that it's nice, I guess, to walk around a mall, but you don't have to do it. You're walking around a mall. You almost feel like you're walking around Alcatraz. You're walking around a place that shouldn't exist anymore and does. And it's weird. And then the food court's there. And uh, they've always got like a Chinese restaurant, a Chinese restaurant with like a weird name. It's always kind of vaguely racist, you know? It's like Mr. Wang's or something. And it's just people that you'll just see people there just eating lo mein with like a Dickies bag. And they just went to go get put a pants on at Dickies. And now they're going to eat fucking lo mein, 3,000 calories of MS, and MSG and go home and then the pants don't fit, you know? Mm. It's it. We haven't figured out a lot of shit on this planet. We're not evolving that quickly. You'd think we'd be evolving at a little quicker pace. We're really not, because the only other option is the internet, which also sucks. Because you get it, doesn't fit. You're on the internet. That's alienating and sad. And you're like jacking it, and then you're like, all right, I gotta buy clothes, and then I'm fighting with my aunt on Facebook, and then what? I want an NFT, and it's not good. You've set up this digital world for yourself that sucks, but. The real world also sucks. Like now that things are opening, you start to realize, man, the real world kind of sucks a little bit too. Not all of it. There's some great things out there, but a lot of the things, like there's no evolution. Like we haven't built a cooler, newer version of the mall. There's no cooler, newer version of these things. You know what I mean? Like it, it, it just feels, the only, the only thing we've done is made them for rich people. So we've just built malls for wealthy people. Like we've made malls and go, well, everything's Gucci. And here's Sugarfish Sushi. And, and that's all we've done. But there, there's, there's not a lot of new things happening out there. But we, you know, and you'll notice this as you open up. Opening up is going to be very interesting. So everyone's going to be out. they be like, this is fucking great. And they're going to look around and go, the country is kind of shot. <laughs> They're going to be like, finally, I'm back. Oh. You start looking around. You start noticing how <laughs> decrepit most things are. You might walk right back in your house after that, by the way. You might tiptoe right the fuck back in your front door, sit down and say, fuck it. Because when you go back out, you realize that COVID was the nail in the coffin for just said like a lot of these businesses and a lot of these, you know, the public parks are bad. Like the public park is just homeless in the park. And there's, there's like hiking trails, I guess, in parts of the country. But the country looks bad. It looks shot. The country's a cancer patient. The country's on dialysis. The country's got a late stage venal disease. And, and, and we are like, we're all going to go back out in it and then start to realize that like, oh, things 
Things need help. We need to like things need a little lipstick and rouge out there. It's not, you know, we were in a we were in a restaurant the other day, a, a Friday's type of restaurant that we had to be in. And you're looking around, and I know these places have been through hell, so don't yell at me and go, you don't know. Like when I uploaded that photo of Cleveland, of the, the steel mill, and I'm like, Cleveland's a lovely city. And they go, that's American steel. What do you want, the tacoms to do to steel? I'm like, no, it just looks gross. I'm sorry it looks bad. I know it serves a function. It's just, it's all smog and smoke, and it looks like shit. I understand. Could we have a city with steel plants and not have people walking around dressed in Reynolds wrap? Is that possible? That we don't have to have boarded up houses and people walking around in cellophane? That's all. I'm sorry. I, I, I wasn't making an anti-steel post on my Instagram, but how, how perceptive of you. Dash American steel, dummy. Good. I'm just saying when you get back out there, it's not going to be, I don't know what you're expecting. It's like not seeing someone for a while. You don't see someone for a while. And then they walk in and you go, God, God, how's it been? You know how bad you look if somebody comes up to you and they're like, how's it been? How have you been? You okay? You okay? Like, that's what America is going to look like when we all go back. You go, you okay? It's okay. Are you okay? Just waitresses shaking, trying to put entrees down on the table. <laughs> Nobody's had any money. Everybody's spent all their money on Soldier Boy's NFT. Cities are, are just descending into chaos. You have just people shooting each other all the time. Crime is on the rise everywhere. Except online. Except it is on the rise online, you know? It's like school shootings came back. As soon as indoor classes started, Mark Norman had a tweet. It was like, we're back. School shootings are back. I mean... It, I want everything to open up and I want to go back out there, but also realize what's coming with that. It's not all going to be sunshine and song. There's going to be some, I mean, kids have not shot each other in a year. Like they're ready to go. Kids are ready to shoot each other. Their teachers, administrators, they're ready to go on like day one. That kid came in and just started firing wildly on day one. I mean, I think the teachers should start shooting the kids when they go back. I hope teachers start shooting kids when schools open up again. I hope teachers just turn around and start shooting them in their little fucking heads. That's what I hope happens. That's what's going to happen when things open up. When things open up, you could go out to eat. People are going to forget your balsamic vinaigrette again, and you're going to sit there with your hands clenched, and you're going to want to go up and hit them. They're going to bring the appetizers and the entrees at the same fucking time like they don't know that's a problem. Again, that's coming back. Yes, you'll be able to leave your house. Yes, but things are coming back with it. The long line at the car wash will be back because people aren't afraid. Crowded public transportation is coming back. It's all back. You could sit in a movie theater next to some vector of disease. A diner where you can watch a divorced dad try to bond with his son who hates him. That's all coming back. You're going to have to see your family again. Thanksgiving might fucking happen this year. You're going to have to sit down next to Aunt QAnon and Uncle Drunk touches you. And you're going to have to sit there and choke down mashed potatoes next to those two. All because of this dumb vaccine, which we could have just avoided. Thanksgiving's going to be back. Your office is back. You haven't seen Doreen in a while. She's back. Hi, we're back. Who wants coffee? The office, office life's coming back. Sit there and talk to Chuck. He just started watching the Americans. He thinks he's living next to a communist spy. Chuck's going to fill you in on that in the break room. That's coming back. Get excited. Your kids are going to go to start going to school again. It's going to be much easier for them to get heroin and fucked in the mouth. That's happening. Your daughter's going to have a venereal disease in about six months because we vaccinated everybody and we're ready to go. So that's back. If she doesn't get shot in the face by one of these antisocial kids who spent the last 12 months reading about Bitcoin. So that's back. You happy? You happy you got your second shot and you're back now? Traffic will be back. It's already kind of back. You could sit in traffic. You got that long commute to work. Passed by billboards of televangelists and healthcare companies that denied you. 
You can pull in your little fucking thing at your data entry job, go in there, sit down next to somebody named Michelle, and you guys sit there and you walk in and there's a crusty donut left from yesterday, but you just put that down your throat and you get to have a nice fucking caramel latte that's 2,800 calories and it buzzes you up for only 45 minutes and then you got to start taking the pills because nothing else works. That's coming back. Open it up. Open it all up. It's coming. And don't you worry about it. I'm just saying, hey, I know we need to open up, but let's do it with open eyes. Let's open up with open eyes here. Maybe we don't have to go back to everything we did. Maybe we can be smarter and safer, okay, about some of the things that we used to do. You know, that's all. That's all I'm saying. I'm not saying don't be excited about I'm excited about it. I'm excited about it everything opening up again. And I want to see everyone I've missed for the last year. It, I've been very, all these young kids are killing themselves because they have no friends. I'm going to kill myself when I'm forced to see my friends again. Do you understand the difference? I've been on the planet long enough to know you don't kill yourself when you have no friends. It's a mark of virtue to not have any friends. Most people don't realize that. It's actually biblical. Christ didn't have any friends. Exactly. But I'm excited for things to come back. I know that people don't, people probably say, I feel like he's not, but I am. It's going to be fun. Things are coming back. We're going to do a bunch of crazy cool shit uh, when we're allowed to do it at capacity. Really cool, weird comedy experiences. Uh, that we're trying to work with different people and companies and investors to do and and shit like that. And and I'm pumped about it. I just I just know that it's going to be funny because, I, and it's just human nature. Everyone that's begging for everything to open because we need it to open, by the way. There's no other option. We can't just stay in our homes. But it's just going to be funny the first time you start complaining again about the open world. Because that'll have, like the first time you're like, oh, fuck. First time you walk into a store, it's just packed. You're like, fuck this. It's true. It's coming. The first complaint you have mm. about it. Remember how nice LA was with no traffic when everyone was scared to right. death? They were scared in their homes. Right. They were just scared, terrified of leaving their homes the way it should be. And then now the traffic's back out. People are having quinceañeras on the beach. Get off the beach. They're doing quinceañeras on the beach in Malibu. They're, they're smashing pinatas on, in Malibu on the beach. Clean it up. And, that, and I'm not, it's keen seeing the era because it, that's what I saw. I don't care if it was, a, I don't want a white bitch there with a pinata either. So don't come at me. I'm just saying there's a lot of fun stuff that's going to be happening very soon that will also anger you. I've gotten a little used to, um, not seeing as many people. And I'm going to obviously get used to seeing more of them, which will be lovely. And my fam, I guess I'll have to see my, I guess at some point I will have to see my family. My mother's in her nursing home. They've just locked her up. No one can see her. I just wave at her through the window and tell her what NFT to buy. Now I'm going to have to go in there and actually talk to her, which is fine. But the, you got to realize what's about to happen here, folks. Are you prepared? You got to just get ready for it. Bob and weave, Bob and weave. You got to get ready for it. Mm-hmm. Many of you think you want it until it's here. It's like anything. You think you want it and then it's here. And then you're like, wait, what? But this digital hell can't last. That's true. We need to go out and see people. We need humanity. We need real friends. We need to look at them. We need to realize why we didn't talk to them that much over the last year because they're non-essential to us. That's the other thing. If you didn't talk to someone over the last year, they, it's really like, I mean, I know you'll go out, you'll patch those friendships to an extent, but like there's going to be a lot of people that reconnect with you after this whole thing where you, you're going to be sitting there going, looking at them going, I don't need you. This year showed you what you needed, what you need. You don't need a lot of things and people. You don't. This year simplified our lives in a weird way. It complicated them, but it also simplified them. You know what I mean? Like, 
I realize that all I need is Ben, and then on the other side of this camera, 500,000 domestic terrorists. I don't need a lot. I just need half a million people, many of whom are on a watch list, and him. I'm not, I don't need a ton of other things going on in my life, you know? You know, I need a couple of good looking gentlemen with six packs or a little younger that want Gucci shoes. That's what I need. I don't need an endless supply of social interactions. I find them to be a little meaningless, but I'm getting older. I'm 36. You're getting older. You know, I get it. If this happened when I was 22, I'd be like, man, I'm fucking, I can't believe it. Dude, what? Now I'm like, I'm, I'm like dreading. I pray every day. I turn on the TV. I pray for the new strain. I pray that people's faces start melting off with this. I go, come on. I roll the dice. I'm like, give me Brazil. Give me Brazil. Cause I'm just trying to avoid Thanksgiving. So I'm like, roll the dice. Come on. Give me something from Pakistan. Give it to me. Good. I don't know. It won't be over that soon, but it'll be over soon enough. I hope I, I do hope it ends. We need new things. We need new things to be angry at and mad at, and we need new uh, challenges in life. We need to go out there, and people need to fuck again and meet each other and, and have physical relationships. You know, I mean, I get it, you know, but it's a very interesting thing to be just let out of the cage. It's let out of the cage. Like, here's the reality. When you let the kids out of the ice cage, many of them were like, hey, man, it sucked in there, but I, this is also bad, wherever they put them. I don't know. You know what I mean? Should I broadcast from one of the Biden administration ice cages for a week? Because Biden hasn't shut them down either. Just go live. Just go live. Should I just do like a 48-hour live event <laughs> from a detention, from an immigration detention facility? I mean, can we sell... Immigrant children as NFTs to release them. That, that's a question. Can we sell children detained at the immigration center as NFTs? Can Mark Cuban do that? Can Mark Cuban take a picture of a child in a cage dancing, <laughs> sell it, raise the money to get that little guy out? And we'd have to explain to him, Jose, you're an NFT now. You're a non-fungible token. Okay. You're a non-fungible token. You're out of here. And we turn to the next one and go, <laughs> you're not a non-fungible token yet. Back in. I'm laughing. If I, of course, am for abolishing the cages. So don't get angry at me. I don't want any children in cages. And I never did. So don't, oh, Tom, I'm making fun of a horrible situation, you know? I also didn't want the My Life Massacre. You know, I'm not involved in the decision-making that's happening here, by the way. Ray 